All right, and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. Uh, today I thought I'd do something just a little bit different. I thought I'd just comb the internet looking for interesting math problems and then we'd work on those. Uh, so to help out, I've pulled up a, a wonderful website. This is where people love to post all kinds of math problems. This is, of course, the Reddit sub, uh, Math Homework Help or Cheat at Math Homework. So we're going to check a few of these out, see if anything looks interesting. We'll dive right into it. Uh, so yeah, let's see what we got here. So let's see, we have uh, some trigonometry stuff, uh, geometry stuff, you know, just some basic stuff. Ooh, there's a really good set theory one uh, explaining why the set of natural numbers and the even numbers actually have the same cardinality. Uh, of course, to do something like that, you'd want a bijection between the two just to show that the two sets actually pair up. Um, well, here's a nice simple one uh, dealing with a parallelogram. It looks fairly simple. Uh, Let's take a closer look at it and see what's going on. So it looks like we have a parallelogram. It has sides of lengths 7 inches and 11 inches. We want to draw and label and find the perimeter of this parallelogram. Uh, you know what? I think that sounds like a perfect problem to start the on. Let's give it a shot, see what we can do. Um, all right, so we need a parallelogram to start this thing off. So of course, a, a parallelogram, what really makes a parallelogram is that it has two two pairs of sides that are parallel to one another. Uh, so we need to draw a quick picture. Doesn't have to be you know perfect, but we need a couple of sides that are going to be parallel. So this is usually what comes to mind when I think uh, of a parallelogram. Uh, and of course, those lines aren't perfectly straight, but you would imagine that uh, in a perfect parallelogram, those are going to be straight. Uh, all right, so let's see, what other information do we have? We have information about their sides. And it said that the sides were 7 inches and 11 inches, and of course that's really referring to the pairs. So let's grab a different color here. Let's go ahead and label the shorter side. We'll label this as 7 inches. And we'll label the other side as 11 inches. Alright, that looks good. Uh, since these sides of a parallelogram are parallel, uh, it's also going to force them to be the same exact length. So even though it hasn't been explicitly stated what the, the lengths of those other missing sides are, you can see from my diagram that, yeah, those are going to be exactly the same size. So that's going to be 7 inches. This is going to be 11 inches as well. Uh, and now we can actually get into the solving of this problem, and that's finding the perimeter. The perimeter would, of course, be the sum of all of the sides of this parallelogram. So if you're going around the edge, and I'm just starting off with the one in the left side here, we got 7 inches plus 11 inches then another 7 inches plus 11 inches. So we're really just adding all of those up, trying to see what we get for the grand total. Uh, so let's see, what do we got? Uh, 7 and 11 would be 18. 18 plus 18, that's a grand total of 36. We want to be mindful of our units in this one, so we would say that the perimeter is going to be a total of 36 inches. Uh, yeah, and that should take care of it. Looks like we have a nice little diagram. It's all labeled, and we have a nice little uh, calculation for this perimeter. All right, let's go ahead and go back over and see what else we can find in terms of math problems. Uh, so this one looks like an interesting one, uh, 10 grade algebra using the imperial system. So it looks like we're placing a mirror on the floor. Actually, let's just open this up. Uh, so Jason places a mirror on the ground 40 feet from the base of a tree walks backwards until they can see the top of the tree in the mirror and at what point uh, Jason's eyes are six feet above the ground and he is eight feet from the image in the mirror. Uh, and then we're supposed to use this to figure out the height of the tree. Okay, so this will definitely require, you know, coming up with some sort of diagram to figure out where all those pieces are. Uh, yeah, let's carefully go over to the whiteboard and see what we can do. All right, so what we have is a mirror. So we'll go ahead and put that as a nice little blue box over here. Excellent. Uh, we have some sort of tree that we're trying to measure. So we'll put the tree over here. And of course, we'll give it some leaves. We'll make it look fairly pretty. There we go. Not a bad looking tree. We'll even color it in just a little bit. Okay, so there's our tree. Uh, and let's see, what's going on with Jason? Jason is somewhere in between here. 
You know, I don't think he is. Oh, hold on, hold on. I got an idea. Maybe where this is going is that Jason is actually uh, off to one side. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, so I think I think the situation is now looking more like this. Yeah. So there's our person. There's the mirror. There's the tree. That's looking a little bit better. Uh, now we can get some distances in here and go from there. So he places the mirror on the ground 40 feet from the base of a tree. Excellent. We can mark that off. 40 feet. So he places the mirror down, walks backwards until he can see the top of the tree in the middle of the mirror. So that's where we're getting this fun line of sight uh, uh, going on here. Uh, we'll mark that maybe in a nice light green that'll work. So he's looking at that mirror. Of course, as, I, as he's looking at the mirror, he can see the top of the tree. Uh, and because it's a mirror, you know, if you imagine that mirror just being nice and flat on the ground, uh, the angle that it's, it's going to create is going to be the same angle going out. So the same angle going in is going to be the same one as uh, it going out. So these two angles, you know, if we want to mark these two angles, are going to be the same. Uh, and that's going to be very handy when it comes to actually, you know, getting some distances in here and, and comparing some good things. All right, so this diagram is starting to look a little bit better. What else do we have? So we know that Jason's eyes are six feet above the ground. So I'll put that as six. Uh, and we know that he is eight feet from the mirror. So what we have is a couple of triangles in here. And because they have uh, the same angles involved, these are what we would call similar triangles. So the advantage about having similar triangles is that everything is going to scale up proportionally when it comes to their sides. Uh, it's kind of tough to see in this diagram, but uh, let's go ahead and draw just a really quick, I don't know, slightly better version of this diagram, uh, and this might help out a little bit. So here we have one triangle. It's fairly large over here. That's taking care of the tree. There's a smaller one over here. But in terms of those angles that are the same, because this is a mirror, we have these two inside angles. Those are going to be the same. Uh, these are going to be nice right angles at the back. And the upper angles up here, those are also going to be the same. So things are scaling proportionally. That is to say, you know, if I take a look at how these sides compare, uh, well, let's see, what was the distance on these? 8 and 40. And I can figure out how much they have been scaled up. Then I can use that same scaling factor to get the rest of the sides. So let's compare this one now. The, that'll be these two sides. So six feet above the ground. All right, so let's see. What was the scaling factor? If we start off with 8 and go to 40, then we can see that we had to multiply by 5 to scale things up, okay? So you'd almost imagine like 8 multiplied by some sort of mystery scaling factor. That'll get us the 40. And if you want to solve for that directly, that's where I'm getting the uh, scaling factor. So you can just recycle that and use that for the rest of your sides. Uh, let's give it a try. So if I have now a side that's 6, multiply by that scaling factor, that will give me a total of 30. Now I actually have the height of the tree. So going back to our original diagram, now we can go ahead and finish this problem. We can say that, yep, the height of the tree is simply going to be 30 feet. Uh, of course, keeping the same units as what we're using for all the rest of the distances. All right, not bad. Let's go ahead and check out and see if we can find another one. Uh, all right, this one looks interesting. It says, how do I make a rational equation? Okay, I've, I've seen a few of these where it has lots of different properties for the rational equation or rational function you're trying to build. Um, stuff like intercepts, uh, uh, holes, asymptotes, and you're trying to build these all into your you know, equation. Uh, these are a lot of fun. 
Let me get my whiteboard all cleared out, and uh, yeah, we'll see if we can give it a go. Uh, so what we need for this rational function is it needs to have a y-intercept of negative 5. It needs to have a couple of x-intercepts. Uh, it has a hole at negative 2, some horizontal asymptotes. Uh, this is at y equals 6, and it has no vertical asymptotes. All right, excellent. I think we can work with that. Uh, let's give it a go. So I'm going to write down just like the, I don't know, template for this rational function. Uh, so I'm going to call this r, r of x. And depending on where I put various different factors, this will actually create the intercepts, the whole, the, the, all the stuff that we really need uh, in this rational function. It is a rational function, so we're talking about dividing two polynomials, so we want some sort of notion of division. Um, and let's go ahead and start off with the, uh, I guess this would be the x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts, that's where this thing is going to equal zero. If you plugged in this x value, you're going to get zero on top of these fractions. Uh, and we have a couple of x-intercepts. So one of them is at negative one, and the other x-intercept is at a positive five. So to make those proper zeros in here, we'll make an x plus one, and we'll do an x minus five. You'll notice that the sign seems backwards on these, uh, but it's not, because you're thinking of what is being plugged in for the x value. So if I plug in an x equals negative one, that's gonna make this entire factor zero out. The entire top of the fraction is going to zero out. It's gonna give me a zero, and it's gonna give me the proper x-intercept. It's gonna be at some coordinate, you know, like negative one, zero, so it's gonna be good. Uh, all right, so that'll take care of the x-intercepts. Uh, we also have a hole, a hole at negative 2. Holes are very interesting. Holes really happen from a repeated factor in the top and the bottom. So if we have a hole at negative 2, then I'll put an x plus 2 in the top and an x plus 2 in the bottom. And since it's the same factor in the top and the bottom, it doesn't really have any effect on the asymptotes or the intercepts. It doesn't really have effect on anything. The only thing it really does is when you try and plug in negative 2, it's undefined because it, it creates that 0 on the bottom. Uh, 0 over 0 is essentially what it's doing there. Uh, all right, so that takes care of that. Uh, what are we still missing? We need to make sure that we have no vertical asymptotes, uh, and we need to make sure that our y-intercept is at negative 5. All right, so to take care of no vertical asymptotes, uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the rest of this area down here. Uh, I'm not going to put any more factors in it. Uh, every factor that I continually put in the bottom that is not matched up with one in the top is going to create a vertical asymptote. We don't want that, so we'll leave all the rest of these blank. Let's see, what else can we do? Uh, oh yeah, we want the y-intercept to equal negative 5. Um, Alright, so to get a y-intercept of negative 5, you would think of plugging in x equals 0 and then looking at the result of what you get out. So we've put in a bunch of stuff, a, a, you know, a bunch of different factors. Uh, what happens if we actually plug in a zero? Well, let's find out. So in terms of the top, this will be a one. Uh, that's going to be multiplied by a negative five. Then that's going to be multiplied by a two. And of course, this will all be divided by a two. You're seeing that action of the whole. It doesn't really do anything as long as the uh, value isn't zero. So these two things are canceling out leaving us with the ultimate value of negative 5. Now, that's actually perfect. That's where we want the y-intercept of this thing. So uh, it looks like we have all of the pieces we need. Maybe we'll just go ahead and write it in a couple of different forms, maybe clean it up a little bit, see how it does. Uh, so let's get a little bit of space down here. Yeah, actually, I think I can fit it right on the bottom, so let's put it there. So the rational function that we're trying to make, we'll call this r of x, uh, needs to have the following factors on top. So we have an x plus 1, we have an x minus 5, and we'll have an x plus 2. Meanwhile, on the bottom, we'll simply put an x plus 2. This fulfills the definition of a rational function because, of course, uh, we have a polynomial divided by another polynomial. And we were careful to put in the pieces just right so that the y-intercept was negative 5. It has two x-intercepts at negative 1, positive 5. It's got that hole at negative 2. And of course, it has no vertical asymptotes. Uh, so yeah, I think that's everything we need for this one. We'll call it good. 
Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and end it there for this wonderful little experiment of you know just testing out and, and answering some math questions. Uh, continue to post your questions out on the internet, uh, and we'll continue kind of searching out there, looking for some really fun ones to do for the future. All right, have a good one. Hey, thanks for watching. If this video was helpful, then let me know by hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel. If you want to see even more examples, then come visit my website at mysecretmathtutor.com. There you'll find all of my videos organized by subject and of course, completely free of charge. Thanks again for watching.